Listen up, all you handheld shooters. You're so pretentious. You're great at pounding targets. You're awesome at Total Archery Challenge. You crush the IBO, the ASA, but you know what? Tim Connor, Dan Staten, we got news for y'all. We're switching, and you're gonna wanna find out why. Boom! Like potential bastards. <laughs> Did I say bastards? No. Oh, okay. But What's like, Jake gonna say? I told you so. No, I, that's what I've been using. It's not that. I've been using it since 2015. No, it's, it's, a, it's a little <laughs> for hunting. Using on what? I've shot elk with that release. When? <laughs> three years ago? Oh. No one cares about three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I try hard, that's all that matters. Hey, I'm gonna advertise for Jake. He's gonna try to he's gonna try to show up to work. He works here on the middle of the month. I'm gonna fire him right there. I'm saying you are fired for the next week until you kill an elk. He's got a Wyoming tag. He's gonna say screw archery, or maybe take his bow. I don't care what he does. But him and Drew Howerton are punching trigger puncher buddy. They're heading to Wyoming on a on a bomb run, meat, scoop up meat. If it's brown, it's down. Well, I think it's gotta be a bull, branch antler bull. If it's a branch antler bull, it's down. We'll come What's to the work plan? that week. You're going <laughs> Killing something. Couple, maybe a little mid-season audible on, on what, what the hunting release is. Oh, what do you have for breakfast, Dan? My wife made protein pancakes. She made plum, homemade plum jam that she canned, and I put peanut butter on it. It was unreal. And now I'm having a hydrate recover. Blueberry raz. Extract get or clapped. get clapped. Tell the people what you're thinking. This is your first I do time like, putting it on. I do like Carter. Forrest Carter. I know him. Forrest, if you watch our channel, what's up? I started out with the Index, and then just probably not, maybe five, six seasons ago, I switched to a handheld, like, or I started dabbling with a handheld. Okay, your hands are cold, the bull's coming down the trail, you've been working hard, you're in the public lands, and you need to get this bull killed. So you just hook on, you're good to go. From there. Pull that hand right through there. I like it, honestly, Tim, I think. So for me, and this is a great little part of the video, y'all need to know, some of my bows have been able to switch from an index to a handheld without having to adjust. For this bow, this is the 29, I would need to move my peep up quite a bit. It's a different anchor. It's a different anchor. The way I go, it is these two knuckles right here, right there, and then this index wraps over. You do you, but for this, I'd have to move my peep up. So right now, I'm kind of not looking through my peep while I'm aiming. I'll shoot one more. And then I'd say for the last two or three elk seasons, year-round archery, I've been using a handheld predominantly. I am more accurate with a handheld. Don't really like hinges. I don't mind shooting them for like probably like target. What I personally wouldn't want to hunt with one, and I'm weird. I haven't trained myself to like the click. I could though. I've, I've always kind of used a thumb barrel for hunting scenarios the last three years, but I am switching to an index for elk in 2023. Here's why. There was a bull walking down a trail that I was on hailing, it was raining, and there was 20 minutes of daylight left, and it was one of those nights where I, I stayed on the mountain, I was probably four miles from my truck, and I just, I thought, I could see blue sky, and I'm like, if this storm breaks, the last 30 minutes of elk hunting is gonna be fire, and sure enough, I round a corner, I'm on an elk trail, I see an elk get up and I thought I bumped it. That's a bull, he's on the trail, he's coming my way, he doesn't know I'm here. Like all that happened in a split second. I took a knee, I'm not gonna do this video on the sights, but I don't like the sight I was running for elk hunting, that's another video coming soon. Just my sight up to 20, cause it was gonna be up close and personal. That took a second, I had to knock an arrow. That took a second. It was raining, my hands were cold. I had to dig into my tight fitting pants, get my hand held out, and it's harder to do when you're taking a knee because your pants are all bent. I get it out, and my hands are cold, and I'm like struggling to get it clicked on, and I look up as soon as it clicks. That bull is like eight yards from me. He's probably 315 to 320, six point, no cows, staring right at me. Had I been one of these guys, it already would have been on, regardless if my hands were cold, and it would have already been back at full draw, and I probably wouldn't have been taking an eight yard frontal and smoking that bull in the rain. And so that cost me time. There's another incident, I'm not gonna ring that one up, we'll talk about it later, but bottom line is, is for speed, and being like quick and fast in elk hunting woods, and it happens fast, this is a better way for me, and I think it could be potentially a better way for you. You're gonna see here, Jake, that I can't really preload and it just goes like which is fine but I can't like preload a lot I would like to be able to really put my finger on there you know 
That's hot. It's, pre it's pretty hot. And there's a way to shoot these with controlled. I generally hook over in the second knuckle of my index. Joel Turner will tell you to go here in between the two knuckles right there. Either way, whatever you do, it's a fixed position and then you are pulling this through the strap. The strap doesn't move. You're actually pulling your hand through. So you can still shoot it under control. You don't have to hammer it. I do think hammering one of these is a lot more accurate for me than hammering a thumb button. I don't even know how to hammer a thumb button. For elk hunting in 2023, and I'm making this video now, and I'm advertising this so that I follow through, I will have a couple bows, and I'm spoiled, and I will set one up with fixed pins, and I'm going to this single hook type release. Now, will it be the Carter? Most likely. I like drawing my bow with the wrist strap. It feels comfortable holding. Every once in a while, when I was shooting a hinge, I would get a little bit of this, little, it wouldn't make my shot break, but it sure would interrupt my process. Being able to hold with my wrist just feels very strong. Tim's got me turned on to this one because it's got several spring settings and I'm gonna find kind of that. I probably go with the heaviest setting, honestly. I don't like a hair trigger. I used uh, Jake's in a video, and when I say this, actually do it. We're gonna link it up in the upper right hand corner. The, there's a video where we all try everyone's different releases and I tried Jake's wise guy. He's got that set to a hair. I mean, I didn't even have the target acquired and I just touched it and it went off. I didn't even hit the target. Mm -hmm. I think you did the same thing. Mm -hmm. So. How did you get a black eye at TAC? I didn't get it at TAC, I got it before TAC. Doing he what? was doing jujitsu. How did you get a black eye when we were doing the light force install video? I get a black eye then? You had a black eye that on that video That was from as well. the same thing. Jiu-jitsu. It, it was the same black eye. How did you, why did you have a wrist wrap on the free spirit rooftop tent video? Crashed my bike the first time during scouting. Just on a nasty trail, basically wiped out in some rocks and just kind of jacked my wrist up. Any other injuries people want the to really, The really bad injury while I'm banged up, why I couldn't train the way everybody else is training this morning is because- Oh, oh don't give it away. You'll have to watch the public land hustle. There's huh. drama. Okay. Let's go, uh, let's go walk down there for a second. That's obviously you just made two very consistent shots with that bow. I got one more bonus clip for this video that's just gonna blow your freaking minds. Let's go. All right guys, so Public Land Hustle is coming soon. We can't wait to drop that for you, but I wanted to show you one of the scaps of one of the bulls maybe I shot this year. You can see right here is a triangle hole. I will flip that over. This bull was quartering two. It went through this scap, through a rib, through his lung, through his liver, through his guts, all the way out the door. Now the shot distance was not far, it was 18.9 yards. I am shooting a 75 pound bow, 27 inch draw length, and at my total arrow weight, total arrow weight, 443, which I'm smiling because I'm telling you, I don't believe that you have to shoot the most world's heaviest arrows to kill elk. I just know for me, in my trajectory, this has worked out well, is the second scap I've punched through this year. I was using a Grim Reaper, Micro Hades, three blade, 125. The bull went 20 yards, tried to go over a log, fell, and was never got up again. And we love short recoveries. So just wanna show you guys that. This is just observations with Dan. The last thing I'm gonna say in this video, and please don't tune away, this is very important. I talked to Tim, he's on the mountain. I'm at home, unpacking, getting ready for the next elk hunt, and I'm like telling him, I, I need to switch to this for elk hunting. The handheld is just too, it's taking too much time. It cost me a really nice public land bowl. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, yeah. No more than 30 minutes later, I get a phone call from you on the mountain. What happened? The moral of the story, speed kills. I had, a, I had a really, really good encounter, and I was kind of fumbling around and I wish I would have been ready faster. I wish I would have been ready faster. We got the Public Land Hustle 3.0 coming to you guys. You're gonna get to see all this stuff unfold. I wanna be ready and I really wanna be ready when I don't have to worry about sending bombs. You know, depends on your hunting situation, depends on what works best for you, but when you're hunting the thick stuff, and, and I really haven't experienced much accuracy loss going to an index. I've shot at some, I haven't shot as much as I've shot other stuff, but it feels really good after going through some shot work, some shot training with MFJJ with Joel Turner. It, it didn't feel like there was a learning curve. I felt like I was able to get set, 
wrap my finger, preload, and just pull, and it, it would break. And it felt very similar to what I would experience shooting a hinge or a thumb button, that kind of thing. So we're gonna mess with it and really like dial it in. We're trying to get it dialed, dialed in. So we're gonna shoot this thing, we're gonna get it dialed in, ready, and this is gonna be my hunting setup for the rest of the year. That's, I probably would leave it that. What do you think about that tension? So the one thing you notice is that this is hanging like this after the shot. That's what you want when you're using an index to have that controlled, pulled through this. I like that the release is strapped to my hand. You can do that with handhelds with some paracord or some whatever. I've never liked it. I've always just put handhelds in my pocket and I did finally lose a handheld actually this antelope season <laughs> and I do carry a backup. That sucks, man. That's a couple hundred dollars in the mountains. Keeping one of these strapped to your hand and then keeping an exact Two is one for all hunting scenarios, especially out west, elk hunting, I always have the duplicate with the spring. If, if I were to buy this one, I would buy two. I would break both in so the springs matched up and I would keep one in my backpack at all times. What do you think about the tension right now for you? Yeah, it's really pretty, I don't know if I would change it, honestly, I, I really like that. I mean, I, it wasn't hair, I had to keep pulling, keep pulling, and it did break, nice, it fits real well. I love the trigger on this thing. The only dorky thing is this little strap system, like if this was mine, like I see that you folded it in here, see that coming out yeah, during the day, out. I'd probably, like you, I'd probably cut and burn that, have it custom to me. Carter makes really good stuff, fairly affordable. They're not the most expensive. And I think they're out of Southern Idaho is where they're manufactured. They make stuff for Dudley, Don Judley's knock on. Is it Don Judley? <laughs> I'm just joking, what's up, Don? Uh, <laughs> what's up, I'm Don? joking. Me and Dud are tight, we go back. All, almost all his releases are Carter, made by Carter with his name on them. And so they make great stuff. I'm, I'm a huge fan and this is all cool. This is, I sell this on the website, you guys can get these. They're great for off season, but honestly, let's go shoot some real bows and see how it feels. We're gonna loosen this to, to be able to adjust the spring. And it comes with four different springs. If you wanna go lighter or heavier. I'm closer towards you. Just make sure. That's what I thought too. <laughs> Just make sure, pop. So this slides in the back of that and it pushes up against the spring. This spring here is the one we'd want to adjust. We can go from lightest to heaviest and uh, we're liking that one we just put in right there. So we're gonna rip some real arrows with it and uh, get you some feedback. To reset it, you just pull the trigger. Now it's locked. Knocked and locked. Yep, bull's coming down the trail. He's dead. Pretty sweet. I vote yes. I feel like. You like where that tension's at right now? Uh, is this the heaviest spring? Nope. I would probably go up one more for me. I, th I could see this being really cool. Obviously I don't have enough reps with it to, to decide, but I would tinker with that. I would probably err on the side of a little bit of a heavier spring. Guys, you do gotta do you. We're just telling you for elk hunting specifically, this might be a better way, especially in timber elk, that you're calling elk and they're coming in quick and things happen fast. We haven't showed the public land hustle yet, but we had some success. I'm gonna tell you right now, the majority of the elk I've killed in the last couple years did not know I was there and I'm ranging them having all day. This year's a little different. You'll have to watch to see what we're talking about. It's the index. We're switching things up, ABT. It's kind of uh, part of the fun, part of the journey, and uh, we'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. We need to get there, we need your help. Thank you so much. We work hard, we appreciate you guys. We'll catch you for the next one.